the minutes. We're going to do calculus on the topic of disguised derivatives. So recall the definition of a derivative, f prime of x. Remember, it's equal to the limit as h approaches 0. And that h, remember, represented the uh, change in the x coordinate between the two points. Uh, this is to escape from our slope formula. The difference of the y's over that change in x. So now that you've learned the derivative shortcuts, we haven't used this method of finding the derivative. However, there are other ways they can uh, see if you know the definition of the derivative. Correct that. So let's go ahead and find the limit of these. So notice what's different about this problem as opposed to a traditional limit problem. First of all, we don't have x there. It's h, so that's one clue. So notice if you were to plug in 0 for h, you get x cubed minus x cubed, over, which is 0 over 0. So you get a 1. So you could try to attempt this one uh, a long way by actually cubing this out, x plus h, and then we have h to factor out. That would be fine. But there's a lot much easier way of it. And that's to recognize, well, this is it's our definition of derivative. Notice there's an x plus h there, x plus h, and then minus x cubed is like our f of x. So this person derivative is equal to the derivative of some function. So we just have to first figure out what that function is. What is f of x? Well, this problem, the easiest way to see that is right there, f of x. It's like it's x cubed. And you can see f of x plus h would mean you plug in x plus h into x cubed, and that's where you get this one. So since this equals the derivative of f of x, now we can use the shortcut and take the derivative the easy way. The derivative of x cubed is 3x squared. Since this limit equals the derivative, this limit equals 3x squared. All right, let's take a look at another one here. So that one you could have done the hard way, but it's much easier using the definition of the derivative. On this next one, though, again, if you were to plug in 0 for h, you get 3 secant 2x minus 3 secant 2x. Um, our other techniques would, would work as well for limits there. So what we could do is again recognize, okay, this just equals the derivative of some function that fits this form. And if you look right here, f of x, in this case would be 3 secant of 2x. Okay, let's limit equal to the derivative of that function. So remember to put parentheses around the 2x, remind yourself you have a function inside. That means we're going to also need to take the root of t using the chain rule. So we'll take the derivative. Well, the constant on the front just stays there at 3. And then you take the derivative of secant, 2x. Start on the outside using the chain rule. The derivative of secant is secant tangent. So secant 2x, the function side stays the same. Tangent 2x. But using the chain rule, you also have to multiply by the derivative of the function itself. The derivative of 2x is 2. So if we simplify this, not much to simplify, but you can bring that 2 out in front with a 3. It gives you 6. Secant of 2x and So that equals f prime of x. That's the derivative. And this whole limit equals the derivative. So this limit equals 6 secant of 2x and The next one. Again, you can see this fits the form of the derivative, so it equals f prime of x. Here you can see the function is sine of x cubed. The only thing I do is rewrite that so it's easier to take the derivative of. What that really means, remember, is sine x cubed like that. So again, since this limit equals the derivative, Let's just take the derivative the easy way. Again, since we have a function inside, that's going to require the chain rule. So on the outside, this is raised to the third, we use the power rule, bringing the 3 down in front. The function inside, sine x, stays the same. And now you reduce the exponent by 1, so it becomes 2. 
But using the chain rule says we also have to multiply by the derivative of the function itself. Derivative sine x, and this goes x. Here there's nothing to simplify since our limit equals the derivative, but our limit equals 3 sine of x squared times cosine. Next one's a little bit more complicated, but again, see how this fits the form of the derivative. We just have a couple x plus h's because there's two different places it's being substituted. So this equals f prime of x. So you can see f of x in this case is x squared cos x. So take the derivative of this, but in this case, to take the derivative, there's no functions inside, so we don't need the chain rule. But what we do need is we have x squared times cosine x, we'll need the product rule. So remember the product rule, you first take the derivative of the first function. The derivative of x squared is 2x times the second one as it is, cosine x, and then plus first one as it is, x squared, times the derivative of the second one, derivative of cosine, is negative sine x. There's not too much to simplify here. I'm just bring that negative out in front. So 2x cosine x minus x squared sine x. Again, that's the derivative of our function, and the full limit equals the derivative. So the limit equals 2x cosine x minus x squared sine x. Now let's take a look at a couple a little bit different. So notice it's still h approaching 0. However, there's something missing, and that's the x. So you can see looking over here, that's where the x would usually be, where the 0 is. So this still fits the definition of the derivative. But it's not f prime of x anymore. Because now, instead of x, we've got a 0 there. So this really equals the derivative of f is f prime of 0. So you might wonder, well, where is that 1 coming from? Well, normally, since this is cosine of x plus h, this would be cosine of x, right? But remember, there's no x. 0 is being plugged in for x. And the cosine of 0 is just 1. So that's where that 1 is going from simplification of the cosine of zero. So, a little trickier to figure out the function here. So f of x is still cosine x, not cosine of zero. Zero is just being plugged in after you take through. So, look here or here to see, okay. f of x is cosine x. And this means f prime, it's equal to f prime of zero. We first have to take the root and then plug it so, derivative of cosine x is negative sine x. And then we can substitute in 0. F prime of 0, negative sine of 0. But the sine of 0 is just 0. So, this time the limit equals F prime of 0, which we just figured out is 0. On the next one, Again, you can see this equals, it's the form of a derivative, but again, we don't have x again. So if we don't have x, that means it's not the derivative, the general derivative, but we usually have. You can see where the x would usually be is where that 9 is. So now this one's equal to f prime of 9, rather than f prime of x. So this, you can see, would normally be the square root of x plus h. So this would be the square root of x, but instead of x, there's a 9 plug to it. So that's how they get a 3 that the square root of 9 is 3. So again, let's first figure out what the function f of x is. Here you can see it would be the square root of x, would usually be there for the 9. But before we take the derivative here, let's go ahead and rewrite this in fractional exponent form. The square root of x is the same as x to the 1 half power. Now we can take the derivative. F prime of x using the power rule would be 1 half x to the negative 1 half. The 
simplify that. That's 1 over 2. You get rid of the negative exponent, you bring it to the denominator, and then switch it back in radical form would be square x. Now, that's our derivative. Now we can substitute in 9. So f of 9. 1 over 2 times the square root of 9. Square root of 9 is 3 times 2. So 6, so f prime of 9 is 1 sixth. And since this limit equals f prime of 9, the limit equals 1 sixth. Okay. Okay. The next one says the slope of a curve at a point x, y is defined as the limit as h approaches 0. Uh, this function right here. This time we're asked to write the equation of the line tangent to the curve at x equals negative 1. So remember the calculus word for slope is derivative. Or sometimes they'll say rate of change. So the derivative of the curve is this. They're, they're reminding you it's a derivative here. If you didn't already recognize that. So this does equal the derivative of some function. So to get the tangent line in this case, remember there's two things we need. We need the point of tangency and the slope. One specifically at x equals negative one. So let's first figure out the function. F of x. This one's a little bit trickier. Because look, here it's minus 5x, here it's plus 5. So the question is, we definitely have x to the fourth. Is it plus 5x or minus 5x? The way you figure it out is remembering the general formula. Remember, you're subtracting the entire f of x. But notice there's no parentheses here. So that must mean they already distributed it out. So think of it as minus x to the fourth plus 5x. Parentheses, that's one way you can write it. See how that negative would get distributed to both of them, making it minus. So the f of x itself is actually x to the fourth plus 5x. You can also see the plus right here. So now, there's two things we need. We can get the point of tangency by just plugging in negative 1. So negative 1 to the fourth is 1. 5 times negative 1 is negative 5. Gives you negative 4. So that's our y coordinate. So now we know negative 1, negative 4 is our point of tangency. And now we can take the derivative to find the slope at prime of x, which is usually the power would be 4x cubed plus 5. And then we want to plug in our x coordinate to get our specific slope. So f prime of negative 1. 4 times negative 1 cubed plus 5. Well, negative 1 cubed is negative 1 times 4 is negative 4 plus 5. Gives you a slope of 1. So there's the slope of tangent. So now we can write down our tangent line the equation using point slope form would be y minus the y coordinate is negative 4, so that makes it plus 4 equals the slope, which is 1, times x minus the x coordinate is negative 1, so that becomes plus 1. So here we don't really have to write the 1 there, because it's not going to change it at all. So that would be our equation of our panel. On the next example, a little bit different here, it says if the limit as h approaches 0, uh, this function equals 1 fourth, then what is a? So here they're telling us what it equals rather than asking us to figure out what it equals. And based on that, we're trying to figure out what a is. So again, the thing to recognize is this left side of our equation is equal to the derivative. But notice, instead of x, this time, and instead of a specific number, we have a. So this equals f prime of a. So 
So we first need to figure out what our function f of x is. Oh, and f prime of a, we're told, equals 1. So f of x, look right here and see, okay, well that would, a is what an x would usually do, so it'd be 8 times the fourth root of x, before you plug it in. But again, to make it easier to take the derivative, we can rewrite that. That's the same as 8 x to the 1 fourth power. If you want to utilize the fact we know f prime of a is 1 fourth, we need the derivative. f prime of x, 1 fourth times 8 would be 2 x to the subtract 1. By subtracting 4 fourths, 1 fourth minus 4 fourths is negative 3 fourths. So if we simplify that, that's 2 over bring it to the denominator to make it a positive exponent. And instead of x to the 3 fourths in radical form, that would be the fourth root of x. So now we can find f prime of a would be, just plug it in a in there, would be 2 over the fourth root of a cubed. And we know that equals Now we have an equation we can solve for a. So since we have two fractions equal to each other, the, usually the easiest way to solve that is by cross multiplying. So you take one times the fourth root of a cubed, which is the fourth root of a cubed, equals two times four. So then to solve it, the first thing we do to get rid of that cubed, the reverse of cubing something, is cube rooted. So we take the cube root of both sides. Cube root and cube cancel out, and they with the fourth root of a equals cube root of a equals two. And then the reverse of taking the fourth root of something is raising it to an exponent of four. So a would equal two to the fourth is sixteen. And that concludes the notes for AP Capitalist on the topic of disguised derivatives.